Oh, good day, mate. Didn't see you there. Crikey. Why don't you join me as we put some shrimp on the barbie? Mayor Dinkum. <laughs> it should be known that Australians are incapable of producing their own entertainment. Take my channel, for example. All around me are familiar faces. This is especially true when it comes to cartoons. As though there are plenty of timeless Australian TV shows, I sadly can't say the same thing for Australian-made cartoons. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at exactly that. So prepare yourself for some of the worst animation you've ever seen. Let's begin! Back when I was a disgusting little kid who did nothing but fart and eat Play-Doh, I used to be addicted to watching TV. Here in the wonderful place down under, we have the ABC. Similar to the BBC, but it sucked. I'm sure there aren't many Australians watching this video that can relate to me as a kid, but man, was coming home from school and turning on the TV to watch some roller coasters satisfying. Ah, damn that nostalgia. Sitting there and watching the goddamn surfing scientist. He was basically a scientist, but he also surfed. Ah, that was the life. Back when I didn't realize how god awful all of this programming was. I know, put my hands in a pool. I know, put your hands in a pool. I know, put my hands in a pool. You put your hands in a pool. I know, put my hands in a pool. Then in 2009, ABC decided to ruin everything by splitting their one channel into three, and so moved all of the kids shows. So in 2009, on free to air TV, there were now three ABC channels: ABC One, which played nothing but boring adult shows; ABC Two, which played nothing but boring adult shows, and whatever the hell this was. And then there was ABC3, baby! Now that was where all the good shit was. A lot of shows that I'm covering today were ones that I grew up with and watched over and over as a kid. First off, we have Cyber Chase, which is one of my favorite shows growing up. Oh, wait, it's American. All right, never mind then. Um, Grossology. Now this was an absolutely fantastic show. And though it was a bit gross at times, it was certainly... Nope, that, that's Canadian. Okay. All right, that's... okay. All right, how about Kid vs. Cat? Nope, uh, okay, that's Canadian as well. All right. Ruby Gloom. Now, this was a really... <sighs> Potatoes and Dragons. Now, did... God damn it, Canada! Did Australian TV air anything Australian? It has come to my attention that a majority of the cartoons I grew up with were, in fact, not Australian. Thanks, ABC. That leaves us with... Me sunny day. Oh god, no. Have you ever wondered what life must be like for bugs living in your kitchen? Wait, what? You don't find disgusting potato-shaped insects with heavy Scottish accents appealing? Life was good on hot dog stand. What are you, crazy? Erky Perky was a show following the two titular characters, essentially just Pinky and the Brain, as they find themselves washed away from their life on a hot dog stand to some guy's kitchen and have to find their way back home whilst also fighting for food scraps within the kitchen, which is apparently a lot harder than it should be. They're also really dumb. Like, really, really dumb. Deal. Ah. <laughs> Bet you couldn't tell that from their impeccable designs though, right? Seriously, this show has the greatest character designs I've ever seen. I feel the need to inform you of how great Erky Perky's family-friendly cast is. You have an old, shriveled war veteran raisin, a psychopathic eggplant, a pink bug that I see in my nightmares, a drug dealer, and Shrek. Life was good on hot dog stand. If you like gross-out humor, you, you still won't like this show. If you ever want to feel bad about shows like Teen Titans being cancelled, just know that this show ran from 2006 until 2011, with 78 episodes being made. Yeah, that one hits right here. Mmm, right here! It does have the best theme song I've ever heard, though. I can't believe I used to watch this crap. CJ the DJ was a show following the exploits of CJ. The DJ. The show focuses on her efforts, but mostly failures, to make it big in the world of DJing. For some odd reason, though, no one seems to give a crap about her. I wonder why. CJ is accompanied by annoying nerd character and annoying oh, nerd character too. In the second episode, CJ stumbles across a famous DJ known as The Shadow, who manages to make it big and get his music on the radio by winning a DJ video game competition. So, naturally, CJ seeks to get her hands on the same game. Ah, uh, Shadow Shmato. Who is this character anyway? Wait, how old is she supposed to be? 13? She sounds like a 30-year-old woman. In traditional cartoon fashion, CJ the DJ is sure to stereotype nerds who are apparently the only people in the entire world who play video games. Can I get your opinion on something? Gamer to gamer? The human child claims to know our ways, Erathonian. 
Uh, and typically, a video game has to have a ridiculous sounding title with a bunch of random letters and numbers in it. DJ Battle 301G. Just like in real life. Boy, I sure do love The Legend of Zelda Xtreme 7200X or Shadow of the Colossus 720ZX2000. So throughout the episode, we see CJ mastering the game, which is some strange mix between Guitar Hero and the Kinect. We also meet her family, just as music obsessed as she is, and her younger sister has the worst voice in anything I've ever seen. I can't believe you've been up all night playing that game. Yeah, what a nerd. Listen here, you little shit! The end of the episode sees CJ climbing up the ranks of the competition before facing the mysterious Shadow himself. I guess the winner is... Not so fast. The shadow. The shadow. Shadow, is it? Come on, I'm ready. And then she loses and gives up on her dream. Seriously. What a fantastic plot. Look, it's basically the Australian Johnny Test. But without the whip crack sound effect. Next up is Pixel Pinky, which is one of the most horrendous pieces of garbage I've ever seen. It stars a girl named Nina, who on her birthday is gifted a phone that contains a magic genie within it named Pixel Pinky. It's basically fairy odd parents, but shit. One episode sees Nina wanting to be taller so she can win a basketball match. So she wishes to be bigger, instead of just wishing to be better at basketball or wishing to win the game. What could go wrong? Hey, at least she actually sounds like she's 12. You've got to make me taller for the game. Can you do that? What the hell is wrong with her chin? Nina's new size turns some heads, despite overnight becoming horribly misshapen and overly large. Much like any crappy cartoon, Pixel Pinky introduces these stereotypical bully characters, who are insanely jealous of Nina's offer to become a model. You're the perfect height too. Love it. You love that? That? No, I'm, I'm with you on that one. How could you possibly like that? that okay, oh I'm beginning to reconsider being happy her voice was high-pitched. Oh my god, shut up. But uh-oh, as it turns out, she didn't just get bigger, she's still growing. So it's fairy odd parents, but the fairy can't even do anything right. Why don't you just ask her to become small again? Why don't- why- Why don't you just wish to go back to normal? Then they have to hide in the park because apparently there's no other solution. Nope. None at all. It's fairy odd parents, but everyone's freaking brain damaged. She then becomes so big that people start mistaking her footsteps for Bigfoot. Then they teleport to the basketball game and show off their expert hiding skills. Instead of just wishing to become smaller, what is wrong with you? I happen to be holding it. Oh, of course. She just turns back to normal. What a fantastic way of resolving the plot. Sorry I'm late, Max. Something big came up. Oh, shut the f- I am embarrassed for this country. This is unhealthy for children. I want you all to guess how many episodes this show lasted. No, go on. I'll give you a minute. Ready? 52. Hello, darkness, my <laughs> all right, next we have Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, Master Raindrop. Sorry. This one is kind of hard to explain. I think we should just start with the first episode. Now, this show has some of the best animation I have ever seen. And by that, I mean it's f Awful. But hey, it looks pretty old. I wonder what year it came out. 2008? It came out in 2008? Man, I feel old. We open on two elements, as they're called in the show, sparring. There are five of these elements in Master Raindrop, and they all have their own powers unique to that element. Their Master Yun asks them to clean his shop before the worst villain in cartoon history shows up. I'm not even going to begin to understand how the hell these proportions work. As Yun shoves his students in the furnace, because that's the best hiding spot. Quick, kid, someone's coming. Get in the furnace. He's confronted by this super evil bad guy who spouts some of the most generic villain dialogue I've ever had to witness. You dare to threaten me? <laughs> then an epic battle breaks out containing some of the most brutal attacks I've ever seen. Truly a sight to behold. Oh no, somehow despite his impeccable John Wick tier fighting skills, he gets captured. And then the fire dude burns the school down. Our heroes do their best to escape. Wait, wouldn't he have evaporated or something? Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this one. Shizou! Now this is an interesting one. This is an Australian and Canadian production that is probably the most popular cartoon of the ones I'm covering in this video. And if you haven't heard of Shizou, then consider yourself lucky. This show stars the creatively named protagonist, Guy, as he transforms into the heroic Shizou. I'll... 
I'll let the first episode do the talking. The opening introduces Guy and shows to the audience how incredibly cool and manly he is. It also introduces his sister, whose misshapen eyes bother me more than anything I've ever seen. The two are in the middle of unpacking their deceased aunt's house when they accidentally come across a ring by throwing their dead aunt's ashes at a wall. Nice. As it turns out, this ring transforms the wearer into Shizhou, a superhero whose secret identity was apparently their aunt. So then Guy puts on the ring, and surprise, he turns into ah! <clears throat> ah! the worst designed superhero I've ever seen. So, if it wasn't already obvious, the joke is that his name is Guy, and he turns into something that isn't a guy. <laughs> Shilarious! Oh great, this is one of those shows that doesn't shut up about puns. Somewhere deep inside me I can sense he needs help. Of course he can. She's Al has she SP. Okay, that's enough. The rest of the episode then shows us Guy getting used to his new and amazing powers. Yes! I can fly! This is totally amazing! Before the city is attacked by... Pirates? And guess what? The pirates make horrible puns too. Such a bargain! <laughs> So basically, the entire show is how long you can tolerate the worst puns ever made. I mean, it's not horrible, just immature. I don't, I don't want to watch this one anymore, it's making me sick. So, there you have it. Guy is Shizau. But don't tell dad, or we'll have a cow. Actual theme song lyric, by the way. Sally Bollywood is a show about a detective and a completely incompetent sidekick, as they are tasked with solving various cases around a school. The show has a very interesting Indian theme around it, so of course the creators chose the most appropriate and totally not lazy name for their main character. It has such a fantastically written theme song too. <laughs> Wow, just... wow. So in the first episode, they have to find out who stole this piece of garbage's art from a school art competition. <laughs> this entire show feels like it's sped up. There's no pacing and everyone talks like they're trying to sing Rap God. Take a look at this scene here. I must have the portrait back. Uh, we'll look into it right away. Just as soon as I clean myself up. No, now! I didn't edit that at all. How is it possible to read lines that fast? In the scene in question, we get introduced to our protagonists. Sally, another victim of a young girl being cursed with a 40-year-old's voice. We were way out of our depth with that art scene anyway. Don't worry, Sally. My new invention will cheer you up, and this one will work. <laughs> Laughs as her partner fails miserably to show off any of his inventions. Uh. Throughout the episode, they interview a bunch of students who are all really suspicious for some reason. The whole point is to mislead both Sally and the audience as to who the thief is. I'm calling it, it's this pig thing in the art room just because it freaks me the hell out. To expose the culprit, Sally joins the competition herself, and just like with real art, she throws a bunch of shit together and labels it as her own masterpiece. Then her partner hides inside of it, waiting for the thief to try and steal it. And, oh my god, it actually was the pig. And then we get our Scooby-Doo unmasking for five minutes, and yeah, yeah, whatever. Next up is... No, no, this must be some kind of mistake. I made sure I wouldn't have to talk about this one. The Flaming Thongs is a testament of mankind's achievement, serving as a symbol of peace and prosperity. Though some claim it was created to torture those rotting in Australian prisons, the Flaming Thongs is actually a beautiful representation of Australian culture, and it... This show is garbage. This is some of the most horrible animation I've ever seen. Worse than Pixel Pinky's malformed chin. And its humor is about as basic as you can imagine. Also, everyone screams a lot. Forever! A lot. Oh, no! What you're about to see could potentially scar you for life. If you're easily frightened, I suggest leaving this video right now. No? Okay. Not my fault if you can't sleep tonight. Whoa! I guess we're not going to the beach today after all. Oh. <laughs> Dirt Girl World is a horrible abomination that I wish I could extinguish from the face of the earth. It's a children's show aimed at teaching kids about gardening, and also that you should have a baseball bat with you while you sleep. Who in the hell thought that this animation would appeal to kids? It's this horrible clash of styles, with real life faces being superimposed on animated heads, with a real body beneath it. But I just had a funny sunny thought. Every single second I watch this, I slowly feel my soul being torn from my body. I mean, just freaking look at it! How would that not give you nightmares? Oh, for the love of God, please don't sing. Oh god, no. I want to issue a moment of silence for the people who had to actually edit and work on this cartoon. Meaning they had to stare at that ungodly face more than should be humanly allowed. So yeah, take that America. You may have had this 
and this and literally anything else. But we have... Life was good on hot dog stand. Hey, so how much are flights to Canada?